What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over lead generation campaigns in LinkedIn ads. So I'm going to be going over some different best practices and we'll be building a lead generation campaign as well throughout the process of this video. Now before we get started, when you do create lead gen forms through your LinkedIn campaign manager, one of the things that you can do is go to assets and you can see all of the lead gen forms you've created here. So any of the lead gen forms you've created in the past, you can do this here. You can see the amount of leads that you've driven, the amount of test leads that you've driven, and the associations in terms of some of the different advertisements that are currently using this lead gen form. So the other thing that I wanna go over is if you see the lead gen form here and you click on these three dots, you can download your leads at any time. I obviously can't right now because I don't have any leads driven through this LinkedIn ads lead gen form. So what we're gonna do is first I wanna show you a couple of examples of what your lead gen form might look like in the LinkedIn feed. So if we come over here to our LinkedIn feed, I have a couple examples here. The first one from Crowdbotics, and you can see pretty good advertisement here, the non-technical leader's guide to building an app. So if I'm interested in building an app, this would be a good advertisement for me, a free ebook, build your dream app today. And when we click on download here, we're not gonna be sent to their website, we're just gonna be given a lead gen form. So you can see we have their image up here, this is their advertisement at the top in the background, and then there is a headline at the top, and then a short description here. Then you have to link to your privacy policy, so you have to make sure you understand you do have to link to your privacy policy when you're setting up your LinkedIn ads lead gen forms. It's gonna say your work email, what best describes your current situation, so choose whichever it is. Click on submit and it's gonna automatically send a, send them our first name, last name, job title, LinkedIn profile URL, and our company name. You can choose the information that it sends to you. So you can just do name and email. You can do name, email, phone number. We will go through that process as we're building our lead gen form. So this is one example of lead generation form. Just to show you one more, I have constant contact here. Looking for marketing consultants, business coaches to promote our new marketing tools. See if you qualify for our product partner program and start earning. So signing up for the partner program, we click here, they're asking for our email address, our phone number, and then it's going to send this information to them as well. Once we click on submit, it will send that information to constant contact. So when we do submit this, there will also be a confirmation, which I will show you in the process as we're creating our lead generation campaign. So now that we have a good idea of what these look like, let's come back over to our LinkedIn campaign manager come back over to advertise. And what I would recommend doing is if you are gonna be running lead gen ads is creating a new campaign group. So with a campaign group, this allows you to actually test multiple campaigns. So you can test different ad formats, you can test different ad copy. Depending on how large your budget is, you can actually run different tests and see what works best for your business and whatever it is you're offering. Because you may wanna test multiple audiences, you may wanna test single image ads versus video ads. So if we create a campaign group and we come over here and just to say lead generation, and I'm gonna pretend for this example that Surfside PPC is offering free Google Ads audits. So we'll say Surfside PPC Google Ads audit lead generation campaign group. Let's just say I wanna run this a start and end date with a budget. We're gonna set our total budget at $5,000 and then we're going to set our end date at the end of July. So let's run our lead generation campaigns over the course of the next month, $5,000 total budget, and now we're gonna click on create. So you'll see at the bottom here, we have our lead generation campaign group. So if we click on this campaign group, it's obviously going to show for our case that we don't have any campaigns created yet. So let's come over here and we're gonna click on create and we're gonna create a new campaign. Now we need to choose the campaign group. Since we're already within our campaign group, we just wanna choose our lead generation, the campaign group that we just created. Click on next, you can change your campaign group if you need to. And then what we wanna do is when you're choosing to create a lead generation campaign, this is where you need to choose the lead generation objective. So when we choose the lead generation objective, the first thing you're gonna see over here on the right is forecasted results. So this is saying over the course of 30 days, this campaign is gonna be spending between this amount, it's gonna get between this amount of impressions, between this amount of clicks, and 30 day leads, 30 to 80 over the course of 30 days, $51 to $77. Now this is a complete forecast, so you can't expect these exact results. You may get better results, you may get worse results, but it is a good idea of kind of understanding, okay, if my cost per lead is for, gonna be around $50 for this campaign, I have to make sure that whatever I am promoting is going to actually drive that revenue back to my business. If I'm giving out free eBooks, to me that probably wouldn't be worth you know, driving 30 to 80 leads for 5,000 or 
for around two thousand to three thousand dollars because to me that just would not be a great investment for my own business so you want to make sure that these leads are going to be worth somewhat close to that for your business or obviously a lot more so we could have a positive return on ad spend so we choose the lead generation objective we can rename our campaign up here so i'll go back and rename it at the end so let's scroll down here. The very first thing we need to do is create our audience. So you want to choose the target audience and try to reach people that are going to be interested in what it is that you have to offer. For my example, let's just say I'm offering free Google ads audits. The best thing for me is to try to reach, or reach people who are already advertising on Google ads. So I need to reach businesses who are looking to get better results from their Google ads campaigns or potentially businesses that want to start running Google ads. Since we're not targeting keywords in this case, we need to choose the best possible audience that we can. So let's start with our locations. I'm just gonna choose United States here, and then we're gonna set our, our audience has their profile language set to English. So now what we need to do is choose who we wanna target. So right now, my current audience is member interests, and these are all pretty much related to paid advertising besides search engine optimization. So we can come in here and get rid of search engine optimization. So the rest of these are all related to paid advertising in one way or another. So if our members have this interest, then maybe they're already running Google ads campaigns and that's really who we wanna reach. And then it's going to say, also have the following attributes. Now this says company industries, marketing services. I don't really wanna reach marketing service companies because I wanna reach businesses and not specifically a marketing adver or advertising agency. So one of the things that I would try to do is probably try to reach people with job titles related to marketing because they're going to be more likely to be making marketing decisions. So if we come over here to our audiences that we're targeting, we come to audience attributes, we can do job experience, and we'll do job titles, and let's just choose marketing manager. Okay, one of the things that's going to happen when you choose job titles is we click marketing manager. They're going to give us a ton of other job title options here. So let's just choose a bunch of these job titles. Let's just select all here for this example. So right now it's saying people that have any of the following attributes and also have any of the following attributes. Pretty large target audience size, but not too bad here. Maybe we'll get rid of social media manager. So sales and marketing specialist, director. Get rid of brand manager. So these should give us a pretty good option as far as who we're trying to target with our advertisements. We wanna reach people that are working within the marketing department at a company and maybe they want some improvement on their overall Google ads campaign. If we can reach, for example, the marketing director of a company, they look, they're not happy with their Google ads results. Maybe they say, okay, let's contact this company for a free Google ads audit. So this would be a pretty good audience to get started with. I would probably create multiple audiences for a campaign like this. So one of the things you may wanna do is incorporate, if we click over here, I would definitely incorporate audiences. If you can create retargeting audiences, let's just say, for example, I have a ton of content on my website about Google ads. People are visiting my website to learn about Google ads. That would be a great audience to target. So people that are visiting my Google ads pages on my website, if I can reach thousands of people that are actively researching Google ads, and I know they are because they're going to my website, maybe I can also create a lookalike off that audience. I would highly recommend starting with these types of audiences here. Once you use those audiences, you want to build some of these different audience attributes and trying to reach the people that are going to be the most interested in your offer. So for my example, it makes the most sense to try to reach people. So if we search here, Google ads, trying to reach people that are trying to learn Google ads. So maybe if I do Google, Google ads for member skills, there may be a lot of people out there that have the Google ads member skill, but may also be looking for improvement within their current campaigns. Maybe trying to find some member groups related to paid advertising and Google ads. So this would be one place to start. Not a ton of options here, but we do have Google ads, Argentina, España. So maybe we could try to target some of these different uh, people that are part of different groups. We could try to use the interest in traits. So people that have interest related to paid advertising, don't think there's any interest specific to Google ads. And then the other thing we can do is maybe member interests, product interests, and trying to reach people who, for example, may be looking into different types of marketing software. And let's just see, maybe account marketing management, maybe a direct marketing software. So trying to... So marketing data analytics software, people who are actively researching and purchasing that, they might be interested in improving their Google ads campaigns. So some different ways to kind of target different audiences. This isn't an exact, okay, we're trying to reach, for example, we're trying to reach software engineers who have 10 plus years of experience with whatever our offer may be to specific to software engineers. 
This one's a little bit different because we're trying to reach people who want to improve their Google Ads results or want to start advertising on Google Ads. So this would be a good starting point here. Pretty large audience size, so I could always narrow this down, but let's get into more of the lead gen forms now that we've built our audience. So one of the things you can see here is ad format. So there's different ad formats you can use for lead generation campaigns. In this, in this particular video, I'm gonna go over single image and video, but the rest of these are pretty unique advertising formats that you don't really find on every single channel. So I will go through every single lead generation ad format in time, and you could always test some of these different ad formats here as well. The most common one you're going to see is a single image. So the examples I showed you earlier, this is just a single image here. So this is, Pretty much what you're gonna see for the most part are single image, video, or carousel, but definitely test the other ones. Document is really good because if you can get people interested in whatever the document may be, you can kind of peak that interest and it helps you drive more and more leads. Now, if we scroll down here, you can see it actually has showed that we are getting worse results after we changed our audience targeting. So maybe we wanna keep testing audiences, but I wouldn't go too crazy trying to find the perfect forecast when you're creating a campaign. You just want to do these tests on your own. Now our campaign group total budget is $5,000. If I was running a campaign like this, I would probably start with four different campaigns. So we'll do a start and end date. So we're going to start our date starting today and we're going to end this at the end of July. So we'll do July 31st. And then what we can do is this is saying this campaign will run for 34 days, spend $3,400 if we have a $100 daily budget. Let's start with a $50 daily budget for this campaign. So then it will spend around 1700 total. And then we can run maybe four campaigns to get started and put our budget behind the campaigns that are working the best for us. So if we scroll down here, our bidding strategy, we're going to max delivery. Our optimization goal will be leads. Keep scrolling down. Conversion tracking is optional for this because really what we're trying to do is drive leads directly from our lead gen form. And we're not overly concerned about conversions happening on our website after the fact. So we're not gonna be doing any conversion tracking here. You can choose one, a conversion here, so in case someone does click it to your website afterwards. But for this example, I'm not gonna be choosing a conversion. Let's click on next here and we are going to confirm save. Okay, so next we need to create an ad for our campaign. If you already have the images uploaded or videos uploaded that you wanna use, you can click on browse existing content. For my case, I'm gonna click on create new ads here. And the very first thing you need to do is name your ad at the top. Now this is optional, they will set names for you, but we'll just put Google Ads Audit Advertisement, okay? And then each of the advertisements are just gonna be one, two, three, four, five, because what I'm going to do is come down here to the images and we're going to upload five images right now. Okay, so we have our five images here and you can see we have, this image is a square image, this one is 1200 by 627, another square image, another square image, 1200 by 627. So you can use different image sizes. So I would highly recommend using square images, using landscape images, use some of these different sizes and see what works best for you. So we'll select these five and we'll click on select. Now that's going to bring all five of these advertisements here. Now that means what we can do is set our introductory text, our destination URL, so we come down here, you can view your Im ad image alt text. I'm not gonna be doing that for this example, but I would recommend doing that. And then what we can do is set our headline, our description line, and then what we can do start doing is creating our form. So let's come back up to the top here and start entering some of our ad copy. Okay, so we'll start with our introductory text. I have stop wasting your budget. Our free Google ads audit will elevate your campaigns quickly. Destination URL, we'll send them to an audit page. We're really not gonna be using a destination URL, but I will show you a kind of where we can send people to our website at the end of this. So as we scroll down here, we have our five images. So you can see all of the different different ads and different areas they're gonna run with all of the different ads we uploaded. So mobile feed with the ad four, and then you can do desktop feed ad one, mobile feed for any of these different advertisements. So let's keep scrolling down here. You can enter your image alt text here if you want to. I'm not gonna be doing that for this example. Next will be our ad headline and our ad description. So let me enter those now. Okay, so headline, I have free Google Ads audit. We fix errors fast and then discover the best Google Ads service. We will get you more conversions and drive more revenue with less budget. So if we scroll down here, you'll see the headline right here. The description doesn't always show. So let's keep scrolling down our form details. So now if you already have a lead generation form, you can select the drop down here and select your lead generation form. So I already have one. So if I select it, it will automatically just load that entire lead generation form and we can save our ad. 
Now let's create a new lead generation form. Let's first name it. We can do our Google ads audit lead gen form. So our call to action first. Now coming back over to the examples, this call to action right here is download for this example. So if we come back over to our call to action, for mine, I could probably do learn more would be the best one. Get quote doesn't really make sense. Download, I could do apply now or sign up and try to do sign up to get started with a free Google Ads account audit. But for mine, maybe we'll just do learn more. I think that makes the most sense for this one. So our form name, our form language. Next is going to be our offer headline. So we need to add a headline to our form. The headline is going to be at the very top here. And then the offer details is going to be the description underneath. So again, we'll come back over and show this example. If we click on download here again, okay, the other one doesn't want to click for me. So if we click on sign up, you'll see headline here, and this is offer details. This is where it will link to your privacy policy and then some of the different fields and then also some of the different fields down here as well. So just keeping in mind what they look like as you are building your lead generation form. So let's do our offer headline first. Okay, so free Google ads audit, improve your results fast. And now next we could do our offer details. So let's write our offer details. These are optional as well. You can just do the headline here, but I would recommend at least putting a sentence here. You get 160 characters. You might as well put a little bit more detail for people. Okay, so we will fix the errors in your Google ads account. Stop wasting your budget and choose Surfside PPC to manage your paid advertising. We will grow your business. Okay, so our privacy policy URL is here. Some privacy policy text, this is optional as well. I said, we'll never sell your data or personal information. View our complete privacy policy here. Next is going to be lead details and custom questions. So with lead details, you're going to see first is going to be profile information. This is showing first name, last name, and then email address is gonna be up at the top. So if I come over here and click on contact, and let's just say I want their LinkedIn profile URL, that one is going to go to the bottom. So when people do submit this lead form, they don't have to enter every individual field you enter here. If it's at the bottom, LinkedIn will send this to you automatically. If it's at the top, then people have to enter that manually. So if we put phone number here, it's going to put phone number at the top and people have to enter their phone number manually. So there's a lot of options here as far as contact. You do city, state, province, country, region, postal zip code, work email, work phone number. So if you want some more information like that. So for work, job title, function, and seniority, company, company name, company size, company industry. So maybe I'm interested in their company name as well. I want to know who's contacting me, what company they're from. So if we enter company name here, again, that's going to be at the bottom. Education, so degree, field of study, university, school, start date, graduation date. And then last but not least, demographic. So you can choose this as well. So if I was doing something like this, I would probably just set it just like this. First name, last name, LinkedIn profile URL, company name, email, and phone number. I just need enough information to know, okay, what is this company? What do they do? So I can do a little bit of research and then get a little bit more information about who's contacting me. So that's first and foremost when you're setting up your lead form. Very easy to do this. Just click the checkbox and it will put it right over here and build your form for you. So next is going to be adding custom questions. So you can add any question you want here and you can also do either multiple choice or a single line input. So multiple choice can be very useful for something like this. If I say, what is your monthly Google ads budget? And then I can do a few different answers here and people can choose that. So I could do up to 15 different options. So let's just say, okay, so we give them four options, zero to 5,000, 5,000 to 10,000, 10,000 to 25,000, 25,000 and up. You can continue to add more options and then people can choose this as they are giving me their monthly Google ads budget. Keep in mind, the more things people have to enter, have to enter at the top here, Generally, it makes it a lower conversion rate for your form, but sometimes it's good to pre-qualify people with a question like this. So I have an understanding of, okay, this person is spending $10,000 to $25,000 a month on Google ads. They can be a great person for me to start working with and hopefully I can turn them into a client. So next is going to be, so this is that was our custom question. You can add some three different custom questions. You can also do one that's just an open line here as well. Custom checks boxes you can do as well. If we click custom checkbox, it's gonna say enter your terms and conditions and people have to actually check this before they submit your their lead gen form. I'm not gonna be doing a custom checks box here, so we're not gonna be doing this in this example. So next is going to be confirmation. So after somebody submits this, you're going to have a confirmation message here. So a message, a landing page URL, and then some type of call to action as well. 
visit company website, learn more, view now, download now, try now. So maybe I'll do learn more and I'll enter a message like, okay, so it's going to say information sent to Surfside PPC. Thank you for signing up. You will receive instructions in your inbox within 24 hours. Visit our website for more information about our Google ads management services and the other PPC advertising services we services that we offer. Now, the best thing for me to do here is send them to a landing page about all the different paid advertising services I offer, basically the landing page where I try to drive new clients. So that would be the best idea, but for right now, we'll just keep it like this. Hidden fields are optional, so we're not going to be going over hidden fields here. And for the most part, you're probably not really going to be using hidden fields. You can add them to your form for tracking purposes. So they will not show to members when they view your form and will not collect any additional personal data about the submitting member. I'm not going to be using hidden fields for this example, so let's just save our ad. Okay, so your ad and form have been saved successfully. Send a test lead through the Associated Creatives, Associated Creatives Preview to verify successful integration with your CRM provider. I didn't integrate this with my CRM provider. I'm not going to be going over that in this particular video. I really just want to go over creating lead generation campaigns, and you can always access your leads at any time by going to your LinkedIn campaign manager. So if we come down here, you can see these are advertisements. It's saying no image, but we shouldn't have an issue with the image here. Let's click on next. What we're gonna see here is our campaign group, lead generation, Surfside PPC, Google Ads Audit. Now we can rename our campaign. So maybe we're just gonna do Google Ads Audit, single. So our total budget 5,000. This is non-optimized because we're running lead generation campaigns. It will run for the next 34 days. Objective lead generation, going over some of our targeting here. Audience expansion is enabled. And you can see all of our advertisements here. We have all of our ad copy ready, our payment method, which mine has expired. And we are going to launch our campaign. Okay, so our ad is now being reviewed. And what we can do is create another campaign. And the best practice here is... So we have our first campaign here, which I did just rename, but I guess it didn't rename it. If we click on the three dots, what you can do is duplicate this campaign. I would recommend doing that if you want to use the same exact ads for this campaign and you want to test something like targeting. So let's just say you duplicate this campaign. It's going to create a brand new campaign. So you can set that up and then all you need to do within your brand new campaign, I'm not going to be doing that right now. Click on the three dots, click on edit for the new campaign, set a new targeting group, and everything else will be exactly the same. So you can just change your target audience here. Maybe I want to target people based on some of the groups they're in, maybe some different interests, try to find things that are more related to Google ads specifically, and use the same exact advertisements to basically do an A-B test of which target audience is giving us better results. So that's the very first thing that you can do. The other thing that I would recommend doing is you can take something like this and we could just create a brand new campaign. Before we do that, go into your other campaign. We're going to click on edit real quick and we can scroll down here to the bottom and under our audiences, we can save this audience. So let's save this audience and let's just say Google ads audit and we'll click on save. So audience successfully saved. Let's come back. Let's create a new campaign within the same exact campaign group because basically what we want to do is we want to test different ad formats. We want to test different targeting, but we can only do one test at a time. So we're going to come in here, choose lead generation, you can name your campaign. So if we keep scrolling down, what we can do is say saved audiences, choose our Google ads audit, click on OK. It's going to give us that same exact audience here. And now to this audience, what we can do is use a video ad format. So instead of choosing single image, we can choose video down here, scroll to the bottom. So I think we did a $50 daily budget for the other campaign. We'll keep everything exactly the same. Set an end date at July 31st. Okay, so we'll keep scrolling down here. Click on next, confirm our save. And now what we can do is create an ad for this campaign. Click on create new ad. And what we can do is down here, it's going to give us our ad video. So we'll click on upload or select. Already have two videos here uploaded. So I'm going to choose these two videos, click on select. And then all we need to do is go through the process, use the same exact ad copy from our previous advertisements. So go back into your campaign. You can open up your campaign manager again, copy and paste that here, name your advertisements. So we scroll down, we select all of this. And then in our form details, we're going to be using the same exact lead gen form we just created, our Google Ads Audit lead gen form. So basically, the only difference is when people are scrolling through their feed, they may see a single image ad 
or they may see a different video ad. Now, obviously this isn't a video ad, but what it's going to do is give us an idea of, okay, we've been running this campaign for four days with single image ads, four days with video ads, and the video ads are outperforming them by a mile. So now what we can do is maybe start a new test, continue using these video ads, and then maybe test different audiences as well. So this is a best practice when you're trying to get the most out of your LinkedIn ads campaigns in general. So make sure you go through the process of creating all these ads, save the ads. So I'm just gonna click on cancel for right now, come back over here and run multiple campaigns at the same time. I would honestly even consider running a third campaign. You can use a different ad format or what you can do is take these two campaigns, duplicate each campaign and just change your targeting. Use the same targeting for both of the duplicated campaigns. And then what you have are two campaigns running here using the same exact targeting with different ad formats. And then you can have two other campaigns running using completely different targeting with the ad formats from the campaigns you've already are running. Hopefully that makes sense. But basically what you're trying to do is test your advertisements. You're trying to test the audiences that you're targeting and you want to test your offers as well. So if you have a different offer for Google ads audit and you say, get a, you know, sign up today for this ebook that is related to Google ads, watch our video where we go over how to change, how to fix your Google ads account and contact us as well. If you need more help, then what you can always do is in your assets, you can see all of your lead gen forms and you can always download your leads from the lead gen form once they start coming in. So hopefully this all makes sense as you wanna create a lead gen form campaign. Right now we would have a lead gen campaign group running and hopefully what we can start doing is getting people to actually click on our offer, take advantage of it. And if, for example, I spend $5,000 on a campaign like this and I end up driving three, four new clients, it's probably worth it for my business. So this is something that could be worth it, especially for a service business or if you have a business with a very high average order value where if companies are going to be contacting me to improve their Google ads, they're generally going to be paying me a good amount. So that means that I can reach professionals in real time based on their interests, based on their job titles and their job functions, and hopefully try to reach the right people at the right time to take advantage of my offer and quickly give me their information with the use of a lead form, which as you can see here, make it very easy to sign up and give your information to other, cus to other companies and for companies to get more customers directly from the LinkedIn feed. So. Thank you for watching this video today. Hopefully it's been helpful as you try to create new lead gen form campaigns, test out some of the different ad formats, test different audiences, see what works for you. And you can even start with a test budget, spend a thousand dollars. If it's not working for you, then maybe you scrap it. You try a different advertising channel or you try a different advertising format, like just simple website conversion campaigns. So if you have any questions about any of this, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.